Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to talk about solving by factoring. Um, it's really the, the same concept as trinomials, factoring, binomials. It's the same concepts. It's just one or two extra steps that we're adding on to the end. We're going to end up with final answers that are x equals a number. Um, so that's really the only difference between solving by factoring and just factoring. Uh, so you'll notice that something these uh, polynomials have that the others in the other videos did not is that there's an equal sign here. That means this is an equation, okay? In regular factoring, um, when we're not solving, it's usually just an expression, or it is just an expression. There's no equal sign, um, which means we can only take the problem so far. Uh, but once we put an equal sign there, that's our indicator that this is an equation and we're going to get an exact answer. Uh, so we're going to talk through uh, three different types of problems. We're going to look at a four-term problem, a trinomial, and a binomial. Um, okay, so four-term problem, remember with uh, we're going to be using in this video the alternate method to traditional factoring. We're going to be using the box and then the x-box method. Um, so when we have a four-term problem, remember that we take each of our four terms and we put each one into a box. So we said so we had one, two, three, four terms, so we split them up into our four boxes. Uh, and then we wanted to find the GCF of each grouping. So our first group would be this first two. So we'll move from the bottom and go to the top. Um, if you are unfamiliar with factoring out the GCF or you're not quite strong with that yet, you must go and review um, my video on factoring the greatest common factor. It's such a foundational skill for this. If you don't have that down, this isn't going to make a whole lot of sense. So just keep that in mind. Um, so factoring out my GCF of these first two numbers, so or, or terms, so I've got 2 and 3. Well, the 2 is positive, so I know my leading sign will be positive. 2 and 3, their greatest number would be 1. So I can't uh, pull out anything greater than 1. Uh, I've got an x squared and an x, so the most I can pull out is an x. If you want to write 1x, you're welcome to. Over here, my leading sign is positive. We're going to move from bottom to top again. And between 3 and 2x, uh, there's not anything I can pull out except for a 1. So now we're going to move right to left. I've got 2x squared plus 2x. Uh, well, I see as far as numbers, I can pull a positive 2 out, and it'll be positive because my leading sign is positive. And for x squared and x, I can pull out 1x. Moving down to my last section, um, let's see, we've got a positive 3, so my leading sign will be positive. So positive 3 and 3, so I can definitely pull out a 3. Can't pull an x out because even though there's one there, there's not one there. So now I've got my two binomials. I've got x plus 1 and I've got my 2x plus 3. And when we were just factoring, we stopped there. But we can't do that anymore because of this equals zero. We've got to remember it's these two binomials equal to zero. So I have to take this a step further. In order to solve this, I have to take each binomial and set them individually equal to zero. So I've got x plus one equals zero, and I've got two x plus three equals zero. From here, we're going to use algebra to solve. So let's think, if I wanted to get x alone for this equation, I would need to subtract 1 from both sides. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So that's one of my answers, x equals negative 1. Let's do the same thing here and solve this one. Well, this one's a little more complicated, but I just want to get my x alone. So I'm going to start by subtracting the 3. So I have 2x equals negative 3. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. This is 2 times x. So if I want to undo times, hopefully you remember we've got to divide. 
So we'll divide both sides by 2. And then I end up with x equals, I can't reduce negative 3 divided by 2, so that's okay. It just stays negative 3 over 2. So you'll notice we ended up with two answers. Usually we will. Um, sometimes we'll only end up with one and sometimes we end up with three, so just something to keep in mind. But in this case, you could, some students just will circle their two answers. That works as long as your teacher's okay with that. So we would write this as x equals brace negative one negative 3 over 2 and brace. Notice these are braces, they are not parentheses. Um, braces equal, um, braces indicate to us that this is a solution set. So negative 1 would be a solution as well as negative 3 over 2. Okay, let's come over here and look at a trinomial. Uh, so my first question is always when I'm factoring, do I have a GCF? Uh, I do not, so I can proceed with using my X box method as we do with trinomials. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and label my A, my B, and my C. So A times C, one times 10, this gives me positive 10. My B value is a negative seven. Um, so let's think, I have got two numbers here. They're gonna multiply to give me positive 10 and add to give me negative seven. So if two numbers are multiplying and giving me a positive, that means they could be one of two things. They could either both be positive or both be negative. So which one? Well, then we look at our B value. My B value is negative, so that tells me both of these have to be negative. So let's think of everything that goes into 10. Well, I've got 10 times one, right? two times five, and that's it. So, all right, knowing that, uh, one of those combinations I know will add to give me negative seven. Uh, so let's think about that. Negative one minus 10. Uh, nope, that's not gonna give me negative seven. All right, what about negative two minus five? Or if you wanted to say it, negative five minus two. Uh, either one will work, and so that will be our correct set. So we've got negative 2 minus 5. So now I can write this trinomial as a four term problem and my purpose in doing that is so I can take my four terms and put them in the box just like we did over here. So my a value stays the same. My b value splits into two using my two new numbers negative 2x, negative 5x. My c value stays the same. And I can't forget I've got this equal zero hanging out. That's gonna make a big difference when it comes to where I stop in this problem. Again, I think I mentioned this in my trinomial video, but the most common error I'm, I usually see with this with uh, our ninth grade students is that they leave off the X. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're rewriting your two new values in here, they have to have that X with them. Okay, those are our split B values and B always has an X with it. So now that I've got my four terms, I can go ahead and write in into each box and I can factor out my GCFs of each section of the box. So we'll start bottom to top. X squared, negative five X, my GCF would be X. It's gonna be positive because my leading sign is positive. Let's come over here. Uh, so notice my leading sign here is negative. So I'm gonna pull out a negative. Between two and 10, my GCF would be five, uh, excuse me, would be two. And I can't pull an X out because there's not one here. So now let's go right to left. Um, X squared and negative two X, my leading sign is positive. And the biggest I can pull out is just an X. For negative 5x plus 10, my leading sign's negative. And we're doing this one. And between 5 and 10, the largest I can pull out is a 5. So let me write my two new binomials. I've got x minus 2 and x minus 5. Both of those are equal to 0. So now I'm going to individually set these binomials equal to 0 x minus 2 equals 0, 
and x minus 5 equals 0. And let's solve each one. Let's see what x is. So for this one to solve using algebra, I'm going to add 2 to both sides. I would get x equals 2. Over here, I'm going to add 5 to both sides, and I get x equals 5. So you could either just kind of circle both your answers here, or you could write the formal brace 2, comma 5, and brace. All right, that works too. All right, let's look at this last problem. This is a kind of cut into my space here, but <laughs> notice that this is a binomial. And in order to solve a binomial and to factor a binomial, I have to ask myself a question. Do I have a difference of perfect squares? Um, so I ask myself about each term. Is x squared a perfect square? Yes. Is 16 a perfect square? Yes. Is it subtracting? Is it a difference of perfect squares? Yes. So since it hit all three of those points, I'm good to go. And, oh, and I forgot, so important, does it have a GCF? Um, and the answer is no, which is kind of why I breezed past it. So <laughs> no GCF hits every point, so therefore we can go ahead and factor this into our two binomials. If you're unsure of what I'm doing here, please go watch the video on uh, difference of perfect squares. Okay, that'll help you out. And I know both of my binomials will be equal to zero. So what's my square root of x squared? Well, that would just be x. So one here, one here. Uh, because it's a difference, I'll have one negative, one positive. What's my square root of 16? That would be four. So I get one here and one here. So now, and in the same way we did with each of these problems, we've got to set both of these equal to zero. So I've got x minus four equals zero and x plus four equals zero. I wanna solve both of these using algebra. So here I would add four, add four, okay. and x equals zero plus four is four. Here I would subtract four, subtract four, and x zero minus four is negative four. So notice I end up with a positive and a negative 4 as my answer. Uh, so you could either just circle both of those, or you could write it in your official negative 4, positive 4. Or, excuse me, what you might see is x equals, and then a brace, and you might see this plus or minus 4. And that's just kind of a math shorthand of saying it could be positive 4 or it could be negative 4. You'll see that a lot as you um, progress through your math career. You'll see that sign a lot. Um, so just important to note. And one other thing I want to note before we close out this video. I made these all pretty straightforward in terms of each one was already set equal to 0 prior to... Um, of starting the video. One thing, and um, it's not always going to be that way, okay? Uh, so just note that they could give you a problem, and I'll just write up here. We'll take that same problem. They could give you something like x squared minus 7x equals negative 10, okay? Notice our equals is here, but it's not equal to zero. When they do something like that, Okay, and they could also put the x value on this side as well. All you need to do is just take this step and move everything over. We have to have an equal zero before we can do this process. Okay, so in this case, we would have to add 10 to both sides. And then we would end up with x squared minus 7x plus 10 equals zero. And then we could proceed as we did. Okay, so just... Keep that in mind. We're really nice on this video. It's not always going to be that nice, but don't let it freak you out. All right, this has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.